When you're using Klein, one of the first things you're asked to do is to select what large language model you want to use. Thankfully, Klein gives you the option to choose from a large list of LLM providers and all the models that Klein supports. But depending on what model you choose, your experience in Klein might be different. So the natural question is this, why do I get such different results in Klein depending on what model I choose? Klein is model agnostic, which means you can select from any LLMs that Klein supports. So in order to understand why you get varying results depending on what model you choose, Choose, it's important to understand what role of a large language model is. Large language models that we use today are a form of generative AI, meaning by nature, they're what's called a generative model. For example, if you send a prompt to client that says, can you add a login page for my app? The large language model will generate code based on patterns and distributions of data that it learned from during training. In other words, generative models synthesize new data based on large amount of data that it previously saw during training. So in our prompt that says, add a login page, the large language model is able to generate the login page from hundreds and thousands of other login pages that it saw during training by learning what login pages actually look like. So when you ask client to add a login page, the LLM will essentially create entirely new data based on the observed patterns from training data. And this pattern is stored inside the large language models architecture. And some models architectures are larger and more advanced than the other. For example, models like Claude Opus is a state-of-the-art model that is extremely good at coding related tasks. Whereas models like Claude Haiku or GPT-40 Mini are typically used for speed and cost rather than generating high quality code. And for that reason, you will get varying results from one model to another because what they were trained with and how big their architecture all plays a factor into its intelligence. Which in our case, how many variations of good login page code the model saw and how well it observed its patterns. So as a consumer, you are essentially paying for the model's abilities, sort of like the cost of intelligence to get a higher quality result. Some models Models, however, offer high intelligence for great value in terms of price, like Gemini 2.5 Pro, GPT-5, as well as open models like Kimi K2, Quen3 Coder, or GLM 4.5. These models have huge popularity for coding-related tasks while also offering at a lower price point. The generative models that you see in Klein are also foundation models, which means they're trained with large variety of data sets that can be adapted to many downstream tasks. And using foundation models in Klein is a good fit since how people use Klein go way Way beyond code generation. For example, client can help you browse the internet with MCP, analyze your business requirement, or do some data analysis, and all of which require a general purpose model that goes beyond programming. There's one feature that is important in large language models, and that is multimodality, meaning all models that client supports at a base are able to process text, but not all models can process other modalities like audio, images, and videos. For example, Moonshot's Kimi K2 and Alibaba's Quen3, as well as some models from Anthropic and OpenAI don't support images as an input. Multimodality is a critical feature to look for when it comes to tasks like fixing visual bugs or even screenshots of new features that you like Klein to produce. Thankfully, Klein gives you full visibility into what models have multimodality by nature. And just like multimodality, there's another feature of LLMs that tend to split them into two camps, and that is reasoning models. Some models are reasoning models while others are non-reasoning models. OpenAI is O1, Gemini 2.5 Pro, Grok 4 and DeepSeek R1 are classic examples of popular reasoning models, whereas DeepSeek V3, GPT-40, Cloud 3.5 are examples of non-reasoning models. So going back to the previous question, can you add a login page for my app? A non-reasoning model will immediately start generating code based on what it knows from training data that it learned from, which typically means that it gives you a faster response. A reasoning model, on the other hand, is designed to simulate thinking before generating the output incline. For instance, before writing a login page, a reasoning model will likely ask itself a series of questions like, what is typically included in a login page? What kind of login authentications typically include in a login page? What security practice should I follow when implementing a login page? So essentially, it simulates thinking by asking and searching the best answers based on the question that it asks, which increases the likelihood of the LLM to use its knowledge for a more focused answer. Understanding what makes one LLM different than the other can help you make better decisions on how you want clients to have all your coding needs met.